Today we are in the green room after the show on Friday, uh, live in the D. Michelle Oliver sitting in for Tati. Yes. Uh, thanks for going out to Nara, uh, one of my favorite places. Yeah, you told me to go there and check it out. I did. They have hibachi, they have sushi. It's a very cool vibe, and I actually knew the chef from earlier. A prior segment. Prior segment, so check it out. Well, how does dinner and a show sound? I'm not talking about two separate events, but a place where they are making the meal the show. All right, it's one of my favorite places to go. I go weekly, uh, sometimes twice a week. The <laughs> staff is very friendly. They have a cool lounge vibe for you to sit and sip on some cocktails and, of course, some delicious sushi. Oh, and by the way, it's also a hibachi place. Yes. Which is very cool. Ding, and ding, 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 ding. Exactly. Well, you recommended it, so of course I had to check it out. Let's take a look. Sizzling shrimp and steak cooked right before your eyes with a side of showmanship. That's what you'll find at Nara Hibachi and Sushi Lounge in West Bloomfield. They're coming for a show. I love making people very happy. Just I see the smiles on their faces when they're eating. <laughs> Chef Teddy Quinones has been honing his hibachi skills for quite a while. In fact, he taught me one of his tricks several years back. Like you squirt it like this way. Whoa! Hey, I didn't say I was good at it. My dad used to work at Benihana's and then he got me into cooking around 35 years ago. I used to cook for uh, a couple of my friends and we all decided that we wanted to get together and open up a hibachi restaurant. The restaurant has a modern, Japanese-inspired design. We wanted Nara to be like a real fun place to come to. We have a DJ in our lounge, you know, where people can come, have fun, dance, drink, have appetizers. Of course, they dish up hibachi, but they also serve sushi and a variety of shareables. I really focus on, on the quality of our food. We make all the sauces in-house. All our dishes have a Japanese flair to them. Well, all of this food smells amazing, so let's get into the menu, and we're going to start off with one of their appetizers. These are their Japanese pancakes, and they're filled with seafood. You have shrimp in there, calamari, crab. There's also onions, peppers, carrots, and it's finished with a garlic aioli. Next, we have a Mexican and Asian fusion with their tuna tacos. So this has bluefin tuna. You also have guacamole, pico de gallo, their special yum yum sauce, all in a fried wonton. Another great option for an appetizer is their popcorn rock shrimp. So the shrimp is first dredged in flour with a lot of seasonings, it's then deep fried and tossed in their special teddy sauce. Another great plate to share is their Wagyu beef sliders. So these are topped with teriyaki onions, you also have cheddar cheese on there, their special yum yum sauce, all in a brioche bun, and they come with a side of fries. Another great way to start off your meal is with this hamachi yellowtail. So the yellowtail is sashimi grade. It's wrapped around daikon sprouts and served with jalapenos and a ponzu sauce. Speaking of sushi, you can also get it as your main entree. And one of these cool sushi boats is a great way for everyone to kind of have a bite. So on here, we have several different types of rolls, including their Nara 101 roll, which has white tuna on it and it's lightly baked. They also have their red dragon roll, which has tempura shrimp and topped with spicy tuna. You also have a classic rainbow roll here, as well as a row of nigiri. And finally, what they're most famous for, their hibachi. Now you can get a combo of any kind of protein you want. We're showing this one with steak, shrimp, and lobster. It's served with a side of their teriyaki noodles as well as their teriyaki and garlic butter vegetables. Uh, so what did you bring us today? So I brought you some of your favorites. You asked me what, uh, I asked you what you wanted and you said you love the miso soup here. So obviously you have the miso soup. Miso is incredible. I, 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 remember, I'm in here twice a week. Yes, Because my do. daughter has karate, so I kill that hour at Nara. 
Nice. I like how you keep it all in the same theme, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Uh, so this is your hibachi plate. Now you said you really liked the fried rice. I personally, the chicken fried rice. I personally love their noodles here. They have shrimp. They have steak. I'll just take a, a little bite of the steak mm. here again. Um, and then the mm. grilled veggies. Oh, I... All of this covered in that lovely garlic butter. Up here in the front, we have their tuna tacos. Mm. So this is, I think, bluefin tuna is what we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, you have guacamole, kind of like a mix of Japanese and Mexican fusion. And mm -hmm. then over here, we have their gorgeous sushi platter. And I have to check out my cheat sheet because they put a lot of their new rolls on here. Yeah, which is, they have a new menu. Yes, mm -hmm. you got to Delicious. taste it, right? Yeah, I was like one of the original taste testers. <laughs> he was the original taste tester. So I've been there so this. much. They're like, hey, try this. I was like, all right, good. So we have their classic Naro 101 sushi roll, which is mm -hmm. this one here. Mm -hmm. um, this one's lightly baked. They have this one, which is their Las Vegas roll. This one's smoked. And then their two oh. new ones are their Wayne roll with Escalar. I believe it's this one here with mm -hmm. a little bit of the crispy uh, garlic chips on top, which sounds amazing. And then this is the Dragon King, which has shrimp tempura crab, tuna avocado tempura crunch. As well, mm. so um, I'm gonna take this. So, what made you recommend Nara to me? Do you know everything? I'm like the the staff is super friendly. I mean, I've gotten to know them because you don't go somewhere for mm -hmm. an hour twice a week without getting to know the you know the wait staff, the bartenders, and and just you know, the managers. It's just a really great place. I really I'm really fond of it. So, who's your person there? I feel like I'm you not, have a guy there. I, can, oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> if I said one person, I, I, I would be in trouble. Okay, okay, okay. I won't. I won't pressure you then. Because then everybody so else would be like, you, you, you like the person you best? Do, do, uh, so do you know why the name is Nara? As, feel free not. to dive in. Okay, thank by you. The way. We brought Greg in so he could eat as well and tell us what he thinks. What I did love, you think of the steak? I loved it. I love steak. It was delicious. I plan on testing everything here. Yes, please continue. Um, so do you know why the name is Nara? I do not. So it's apparently a city in Japan, and oh. it's really known for its culinary history. And one of the cool things about it, I've actually heard this before, there's deer there that are trained to like say hi to people and like you come up and pet them. And because we have so many deer in Michigan, it just made sense. All right, we're going to go. Wrap. Uh, if you would like to try Nara Hibachi and Sushi Lounge, they are located mm. in West Bloomfield at the corner of Maple and Orchard Lake Road. Yes, and if you want more restaurant recommendations and oh. behind the scenes chats with fellow foodies, sign up for the Dine in the D newsletter. Just look for the newsletters tab on the top of clickondetroit.com. So, uh, Michelle, have you ever been to Solo Records? No, and it's surprising because it's in my neck of the woods. So yeah, you, I you live like, like down the street from there. I know, so I should like walk over sometime. What, what do they do there? Everything. Everything. <laughs> a little bit of this and a lot of that, so uh, look at this. Albums, 45, CDs, cassettes, DVDs, VHS tapes, 8-tracks. If it's old-school retro media, you are going to find it at a gem of a shop on Woodward and Royal Oak. And as you're about to see from my recent visit to my favorite record store, you never know what you'll find or see. WABX, Real Rock Radio. A vintage t-shirt hanging on the wall here at Solo Records. In Royal Oak, a place where you can come and get anything from DVDs to CDs to records to 45s and so much more. There's more here than you could look at in probably a week of being in the store. There's even VHS tapes, believe it or not. Please, Hammer, don't hurt them. We even have vintage audio equipment and eight tracks. Does anybody come in here and buy eight? Oh, dumb, dumb suckers. Lorna, you're the owner. How many years in business? 41. Does anybody come in here and buy a track? Absolutely, and that's just the small, uh, better ones. There's boxes over there where they're 50 cents a piece, and people buy them up every day. Tom Jones, one of my favorites. There he is right there. What's going on, Amanda? Hi, good to see you. Good to see you. Georgie, good to see you. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, rummaging through the albums, looking for vintage finds. What's your name? Eric. Eric, uh, why do you come here? Because it's a unique place. I always find something different when I come out here. And try to take advantage of when I'm in the area to come out here. A little bit of Great everything. Place. Archie Bell and the Drells, Cool and the Gang. Try not to give you guys motion sickness. Rarities, cassettes, Super Tramp. 
awesome. Albums, George Benson, love it. Dave Brubeck, all about that. Uh, vintage art on the walls, posters. A little bit of everything here at Solo Records. You should stop by soon. And joining us from Solo Records is the manager, Heath Craig. Hey, what's going on? Oh, having a great morning. Uh, I think we covered it pretty well, but uh, how would you describe uh, some of the odder things that you could find at the store? I mean, you've brought some rarities here with you today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A uh, little bit of everything, truly. Uh, and in a new space. Absolutely. We just moved two months ago. Same parking lot, just two storefronts down. Everything's fresh. Everything's nice and clean and new. Uh, well with, lit. Uh, yes. And always music going in the store. Uh, let's take a look at what you have on the table here. I think Mike's got a shot of uh, Eraserhead right now. Um, that's the, what, soundtrack? To yes, very hard to find. 82 press of the Eraserhead soundtrack. All right, and there we see a VHS of the Beatles' Help. I know that Greg Russell's going to be looking at that. <laughs> yes, uh, certain music VHS tapes are back. Uh, music cassettes are back. Uh, people love rap. And Miles, love Miles Davis is known as that yes. already? Yes, yes. This is a very clean, original copy. How much would something like that, that sell for? Um, this, oh, all over the place, but uh, we're asking 400 for Ooh. it. Yes. <clears throat> and that's, uh, when you look at what it goes for online, that's a pretty good deal. Okay, and here you have an example of uh, like a turntable you might be able to find yeah. at the store. Yes, nice heavy-duty pioneer. Mm -hmm. And uh, back here we've got, uh, who is that? Oh, that's Alice Cooper. Yes, out. and it's got the now hard to find undergarments. What? These always disintegrate. But uh, original in the Original, pocket. yes. How much does that go for? This is 99. Okay, all right, that seems fair. And uh, then some other uh, paraphernalia over here. Yeah, some we've got sets and eight track. Old cream magazine, a reel to reel. Lots of different stuff. We, so how how would you suggest people care for these collectibles once they acquire them from you? You want to keep your rooms cool and dry. Heat and water are a collectible's worst enemy. You just want to keep cool things cool and dry. And, dry. and uh, we've covered a lot of bases, but anything else? Uh, do you sell more than recordings, obviously? Oh, yeah. Magazines, books. Wall uh, art. Yeah. T-shirts. Uh, yes, lots of classic T-shirts. And uh, just uh, anything collectible, music-related, film-related. Oh, there you have it. Uh, tell the good folks. Uh, oh, wow, look at that old WABX mm -hmm. shirt from back in the day. Um, you're on Woodward on the east side of Woodward. Uh, what's the nearest cross street? Yes, we are just south of 13 Mile, about a half mile. So right around 12 and a half in Woodward in Royal Oak. 30148 Woodward. All right. He, thanks for being here today with us. All right. Good Thank to see you. Thank you, Jason. You know, thanks, I'll be guys. in to see you in the store. Absolutely. As I a quartet of movies with Greg Russell this week. Yes, I hear the rom-coms coming back, and I'm very excited. That would be the one with uh, uh, Julia Roberts and George Clooney. Yeah, I grew up watching Julia Roberts and George Clooney in rom-coms, and now they're still starring in rom-coms. Well, that's one of the four. Here's Greg. A big weekend for movies that seems to be kicking off the year-end movie blitz, where we start to see some blockbusters and Oscar contenders. Movie reviewer Greg Russell is back for Real Talk this morning and to eat sushi. Uh, hey, Greg. <laughs> hey, Jason. Well, let's start with the movie Black Adam. Dwayne The Rock Johnson stepping into the superhero role in the DC universe. What's it about? It is all about there was a kid uh, 5,000 years ago who had these special powers, so people decided to lock him up, basically, to get rid of him. Then a modern day kid reads the, uh, about the story about him and releases him. So now he's out to take away things from the evil people on the face of the earth. All right, let's look at an interview. Dwayne, good to see you again, man. Great to see you too. Yeah. God, because you know the Motor City loves you. I love Detroit. <laughs> Many, many memories in Detroit, yeah. You've always been everybody's hero, yeah. if you know what I mean, in the ring. And now mm -hmm. they're going to see you this way, and it's like, man, this just has to be almost again like a childhood dream. A dream, a dream. For the very first time I put that costume on, it was a dream. Um, and I, this has also been a passion project of mine, and I fought for this one. I pushed it along for o over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Just as important, I think everyone can see themselves in a way 
in Black Adam and in some of the other characters too as well. Mm -hmm. But when I saw my first comic of Black yeah. Adam, yeah, and I saw his face uh -huh. look intense, mm -hmm. and I saw his brown skin, mm -hmm. I said, man, who is that? I want to be that. I grew up in comic books. Batman mm -hmm. was, you know, as a young boy growing up in Ireland, we used to put our raincoats around our neck like this and <laughs> jump from kind of, you know, the bicycle sheds <laughs> and, uh, and try and fly. Uh, so uh, I enjoyed enormously playing this role. Kent Nelson is one of the oldest characters. He's a much loved character, as is Hawkman. Mm -hmm. All these characters are. Uh, my boys, my sons were so thrilled, <laughs> so thrilled uh, for me to be playing this. We oh, saw great. the film last week and they were just enamored by it all. How many reels? Uh, four, for sure. I mean, it's a very inspiring story. Also, love The Rock again. He loves Detroit. And Pierce Brosnan, just cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just cool, Just right? cool. Next up, a new movie with Academy Award winners George Clooney and Julia Roberts, Ticket oh. to Paradise. Are we starting to see a revival of rom-com? I think so. I think so. I mean, and the best part is that I really liked about this, Jason, when I say it's an adult rom-com, it's one that we're... Made you... by adults for adults. Right. Right. Let's uh, take a look at a clip. Mom, Dad, this is good day. Om swastiastu, pa. Om swastiastu, me. Om swastiastu, good day. Hey. Hey. You learned that to make me look bad. You don't need my help there. Uh... Mr. and Mrs. Cotton, I welcome you to my country and soon to my home. Mrs. Cotton is his mother. You can just call me Georgia. Oh, that's your wish, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with Mr. Cotton. <laughs> How many reels? <laughs> Four for sure. I, you'll get a kick out of it, I know. Funny? <laughs> yes. Uh, did they have chemistry? Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely great chemistry. Why are you wearing that? Oh, this is my... Uh, Oh, ticket, ticket to, to Paradise, Paradise sure. sure. Your swag, yeah. okay. Yes, yeah, so I got that. You know, have the Black Adam. I don't know what I've got for the next movie. <laughs> All right, now to a couple <laughs> new movies on streaming. We'll start with Netflix, and the movie is The School for Good and Evil with... Charlize Theron, uh, Kerry Washington, and Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, they're all in there. And uh, it's all about these two girls. One wants to go to the evil school, one wants to go to the good school. They go through the portal, they both wind up at the wrong school. Okay, let's look at a clip. The School for Good and Evil, where the true story behind every great fairy tale begins. The School for Good trains the heroes. The School for Evil, the villains. You're trying to tell me that Snow White and Cinderella and Jack and the Beanstalk were real. Our graduates live the very real events, which become the stories. That change the world. Looks kind of wild. How many reels? Uh, this one's definitely for <clears throat> teenagers, so a nice three and a half for them. Okay. And finally, we have a new dramedy out on Apple TV Plus with Ewan McGregor and Ethan Hawke. It's called Raymond and Ray. What's going on here? Love this one. It's about these two guys. Their father dies. And they had not talked to the guy for years, but all of a sudden when he passed away, he had in his will, they had to bury him. So the two brothers get together to go to the small town and take care of dad's arrangements and just all types of weird <laughs> stuff happens. This reminds me of Larry, Daryl, and Dylan. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, how many reels for it? Uh, this one a four, because, I mean, very well acted. And also, you're just you and McGregor and Ethan Hawke just love those two guys. Okay, we skipped ahead on a prompter. Let's go ahead and look at a clip. Hi. How did you know our father? We were lovers for a while. What was he like as a father? The worst. Like a weight on my chest. Forgiveness is good. Hi guys, this is my son, Simon, Raymond, and Ray, your brothers. <laughs> Raymond and Ray. Hello. <laughs> Again, uh, uh, four reels? Four reels. I mean, it's like you said, it's got humor, but also it has heart and opens up about family situations. Oh, where can people see more of your interviews and whatnot? Go to movieshowplus.com, check us out there. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter, which automatically puts you in line to get some swag, like Movie maybe a shirt like this. Movieshowplus.com. You got it. All get right. a shirt like That's this right. or like this one. There you go. Alex Thomas, a very funny guy. He's gonna be uh, at Burt's Comedy Warehouse, Friday night show, 
two on Saturday, one on Sunday. Yes, he had us cracking up in studio and maybe had, we had a couple of firsts for Live in the D. Yeah, <laughs> uh, wait till you hear his story of how he ended up writing for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. In his career, he has worked on shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, The Jamie Foxx Show, and In Living Color. He's also open for comedians like Damon Wayans and Mark Curry, and rap stars Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, and Eminem. Wow. Now Alex <laughs> Thomas is bringing his brand of funny, the Funny Don't Stop Tour to Detroit, and you can see him at Burt's Comedy Warehouse in Detroit. He joins us now live in studio. That's him right there. That's right, Detroit. What up, though? What up, though? Well, what up, though? Hey, I like, I like you said, okay. I I'm, hear you. I'm down. You down, you down. You, invi you invited to the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, I'll bring a container. Yes, there you go. <laughs> or foil, or foil. <laughs> yeah, bring some foil. Let's go back to when you first started in comedy because one of the first things you did was work on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. How did that happen? Well, the question I get all the time is, oh my God, that was one of my favorite shows of all time. Did you take writing class? Did you go to writing school? Absolutely not. I was just a brother in the right place. At the right time. At the right time. I remember the day like it was yesterday, July 2nd, 1992. I was a broke stand-up comic. I had $11 in my pocket. Caught the bus to the Laugh Factory in Hollywood. Sat in a 13-hour line just to do three, uh, three minutes on amateur night. Got off stage. Will Smith was sitting in the front row of the comedy club. And this was way before he was slapping people, right? So oh. thank God. He did not slap me, right? So first thing he says to me is, oh my God, you're real funny. My name is, I'm like, bro, I know who you are. <laughs> he goes, man, I got this brand new TV show. I'm like, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I, I watch it every week. It had only been on two years at that time. He goes, let me ask you a question. He goes, do you write? I was like, you got a pen? <laughs> He's like, well, do you think we can come down and help us with some funny stuff? Like what I saw on stage tonight, I was like, hold on, let me check my schedule. Yes, I'm available. <laughs> he goes, when do you think you can come down? I'm like, now. <laughs> can I get a ride with you? And the rest was history. I was there the next day, four years, 80-something episodes, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Well, what kind of things do you talk about when you're on stage uh, doing your act? I talk about everything and anything under the sun. I'm not a political dude. I, I talk about stuff that um, just comes to mind. Like, for example, the potholes in Detroit. <laughs> you ever hit a pothole in Detroit? Of course. I rented asked. a car last summer, was driving around. I hit a pothole so deep, it felt like I flew off a bridge. <laughs> it cracked my rim, busted my tire, and I farted at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I was ready to write a, a letter to the governor. Like, this is, this is not good. Yeah, she ran on fix the damn roads. Right, 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 right exactly. You're, you're a 15 handicapper in, in golf, which I'm jealous of. The, the best <laughs> I ever got was 18. Right. Uh, your nickname is Inglewoods. You even have a golf show where you play rounds with sports legends, and you're cracking jokes on the course with, with these icons. Yes. Uh, what's this all about? Well, first of all, I am the ghetto Tiger Woods. They call me Inglewoods, yes. <laughs> Because I'm from South Central L.A., but I've been playing golf 25 years now, and it has become the other love of my life outside Besides of my comedy. family and my wife and comedy. But everybody asks me, so when did you start playing golf? I'm like, the year every black man in America started, 97, when Tiger won the Masters, and the next thing I know, I'm hooked and addicted. This is probably one of the first times I've come to Detroit and not played because I do not like playing in cold weather. I don't blame you at all. I'm from L.A. We wear wife beaters on Christmas. It's, it's 72 degrees on Christmas, so. You've, you've met a ton of recognizable people in your career, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, uh, Drake, just to name three. Yeah. Uh, you sent us a picture we want to ask you about because it has a couple of Motown singers in it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, so uh, you're talking about the picture with me, uh, Lionel Richie. Yeah. And Stevie Wonder. Uh, yeah, that was actually me doing a radio station in New York one morning. And I just happened to go in there, and I was on radio, and that was the year I met my wife in 2006, and she came along with me, and it was it was just a pleasure being in their presence. So Lionel Richie goes, "Hey man, before I could shake his hand, he goes, you're really funny," and I couldn't believe Lionel Richie knew who I was. It just happened to be the Jamie Foxx show was one of his favorite How about that? TV shows, and then Stevie Wonder goes, "Man, you funny as hell," and I wanted to go like. How you know, Stevie? <laughs> How you know that, Stevie? So Stevie's like heard a lot of my comedy too. So we got about thirty seconds left. Yes. What What is the funny? Don't stop all about uh, the book you have right there. Here? We what go. It's it? called the Funny Don't Stop. It is a bestseller on Amazon's uh, best-selling book list right now. Uh, it's uh, a comic book 
I found an amazing illustrator that turned all my jokes into animation and illustration. Everybody knows me for that. Motown Magic is my animated series on Netflix. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right. serious about it. Where can people get tickets for your shows at Burt's Comedy Warehouse this Burt's weekend? Burt's Comedy Warehouse this weekend. Uh, four shows hosted by your boy Dre Murray, Alex Thomas, eataturts.com, and The Funny Don't Stop. Say it with me. The Funny Don't Stop. One more time. The Funny Don't Stop. You heard the man. The Funny yeah. Don't Stop. Thanks for being here, Alex. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. That was fun. Well, we got you all set for the weekend. We have places to eat, things to do and see, and new places to check out uh, if you are into music. So we got it all. Uh, definitely check out Nara in uh, West Bloomfield. Uh, you might even see me there. Yes. Have a I, great weekend. Bye. He, he normally says at the end of the bar. <laughs>